Hello and welcome to Flory Models Kit View Time. Today we've got Meng's latest release. This is the 148 scale new tooled F4G Phantom 2. So again, this is one of those things where everything comes along like buses and I've got one down in here. Not exactly an F4G, but obviously this is the F4EJ. Uh, very, very similar kit by Zukamori. And this got released again uh, a little while ago and I've literally only just finished this in the last couple of months. To be honest with you, I had a few problems with the kit as well, which is a few little fit issues, nothing massive, but definitely something you want to take care of uh, to get it the best out of this particular kit. So anyway, when obviously Meng spoke about releasing their one, I just wondered, because there's similar money, there's not a lot in it, there's only a couple of quid into it, what are the major differences between obviously the Zukamori kit, which I know very well now, and obviously the Meng kit. So I thought the better way to do it is to have a proper look at it. So as we can see, we got down in here with a nice hill scheme on here. Uh, one of the US Air Force's F4Gs, the last of the uh, true wild weasels, if you like, before obviously the F-16 took over the mantle with this particular one. This kit is actually available in a few different flavors as well. We know we've got the E coming along, which is the standard long nose one with the gun uh, in there, sort of the US Air Force's uh, F-4 Phantom, which is very similar, obviously, to the EJ and the same type of thing as what Zukamori has been doing as well. Down here, as you can see, having a run around on the box, we can see it comes with a plethora of uh, weapons as well, as you might imagine. So we've got some sparrows, we've got some mavericks down in there, and obviously we've got various uh, anti uh, shrike type missiles uh, and things like that, jammer pods, bits and pieces, as you might imagine. Some nice bits of CAD showing you what it's like down in there. Kit number for this one is LS015. And down in there, carrying a bit of mavericks and uh, some shrikes, I think they are. Uh, Dan Archie on the wings. So in the box, we are greeted by uh, the box. We can see we've got the obligatory of you can win bump and then straight into it. So straight off the bat, as I can see down in here, what we've got is a one piece fuselage, which is completely different to how uh, Zukamori did theirs. They did theirs as uh, basically a two piece. Uh, with a center in here. So this one is completely separate. So obviously this one is purely the Air Force one because down in here you've got the refueling door at the top. So that's way. So this seems to be more akin to how uh, Academy do their ones. So we've got the main fuselage down in there. We've got a one piece bottom half as well. So again, no differences with this particular one. Some of them obviously have a natural break just down in here for different nose sections. This is going to be a true F4E right the way through. And then we're gathered by bag. Obviously, we've got cockpits and things down in there like that. We've got some engines, which look very nice in there. We've got the tail as well. So we've got the vertical tail and the jammer pods on there and the various things. And so we've got some sparrows, I think, down in there. We've got the clear parts down here at one end. So we've got one clear part system down in there, all in the open position. We've got bag here as well. So again, that is all the Mavericks. So fair enough as well. So then down in here, we've got some of the uh, sort of uh, the missiles. So uh, we've got the big old uh, um, uh, anti-radar missiles down in there, the older versions. And then obviously we've got the various interior bits for the inside. And then last up, no, we've got two more. We've got the fuel tanks. We've got, looks like, very long intakes as well. That's very nice just down in there. And then down in here, we've got the wings. We've got those strikes. So yes. Very nice indeed. Or are they AGM 88s? And last up as well, we've got obviously the decals, giant sheet there with lots of mouths on there, which is what we like. And we've got the instructions. So, what we do to start with, we'll go straight into the instructions. So, if we just move these out of the way. So, as we can see, we've got a nice booklet. Pretty much standard Meng, all the usual bits and pieces, and then straight into it. So as you can see, straight off, we've got panels on the tops, which is going to be quite nice for obviously painting and detailing. And it looks like we've got decals as well, which are going to go up to give you details down into this. So you have got some very nice raised detail, it looks like, down in there. So all the bits down in the cockpit. So we've got the rear position as well, with obviously the standard uh, for the G, with the big screens down in there for the radar warning receivers uh, and the attack radar, things like that. And then obviously we've got the cockpit all going down in there. 
system is going to plug it up underneath so that's going down in there like that all right and then all the little bits in so again we've got this little clamshell which is very very reminiscent of academies as well of the way that they've done theirs with the sort of clamshell area down at the back for the heat plating so that's going to go down in there and that's going to fit up underneath and then we're making our way our way through so obviously we've got the main gear being fitted down into this one the nose well fitted down into this one we've got those auxiliary intakes underneath showing the bottom part of the engines so they're going to be fitting in there just like that and then going through so we've got not quite whole engines down in here but we've got full length cans uh into this actual area but we do have full length intakes which are going to go in there as well so going to be making them seamless and then very sort of reminiscent of the academy one it all plants down and then it's going to come in from the bottom the old hasagawa way of doing it if you like uh, as it comes up underneath the greet so we've got those intakes being fitted on they're fitted in again very very similar to how academy do theirs and then obviously we've got the flaps and the ailerons being positioned in depending Depending on how you want those you can fit those in burner cans tail hook tail going in the top so again sometimes that can be a brilliant join other times it could be a bit of a nightmare so we'll see how that one goes so we're fitting those in and then obviously very uh, much uh, part of the family for the phantoms is these leading edge uh, extensions for the slats being fitted at the front so we've got all of those being fitted down into this one and then we're talking about obviously the blowing doors and the main gear doors being fitted in we've got the speed brake obviously can be positioned open or closed down in there as well again both sides main gear going on nose wheel gear going on right the way through and then we've got all the doors and the various bits and pieces going in at the front and then we've got the pod as well being fitted underneath there as well so that's all being fitted in pretty standard and then obviously we've got the actual missiles going in so we've got the agm 88s the old harm missiles that's what they are it's not the strikes it's not quite that old being fitted down into there then we've got the mavericks going down in there then we've got the agm 78s the older version and then we've got some sparrows and then we've got the long and the short version of the uh, alq uh, pods as well being fitted down into that one and then usual thing weapons load out and positioning exactly how you want to have all of those down in there then back to the cockpit so quite a simple type of uh, design for the seats being fitted down in there the hud going in there obviously some of the antennas and blades being fitted down into this one and then the canopy system being fitted in and again we get a little boarding ladder which is a really nice touch with it as well Last up, obviously, we've got the front, depending on the version that you're actually doing with this one, to open up the hole on the nose. And then, obviously, we've got the pitot tube being fitted, long and short ones uh, down in there. And that is about it. So, Mark in to say it's in the hill scheme, which is quite nice. So, what have we got down in here? The 561st Fighter Squadron, 57th Fighter Wing. Okay, so that's quite a nice one down in there. And then we've got one here, which is the 23rd Tactical Fighter Squadron uh, in Turkey. So again, that's a nice one. I think it's one of the Spang jets down in there, to be honest, with SP on it. And then a little bit more retro. We've got the older scheme down in here as well from the 81st Tactical Fight Squadron 52nd Fighter Wing as well, which is down in from uh, Spang again, Germany in 1978, which is quite a nice touch. Then we've got various details as well for the actual call out. Nice touch with this one. It looks like we get a masking set. Hopefully we do down in here. So that's a really nice touch with it. And we've got your color call outs just like that. So that's very nice. So this is quite exciting because I haven't seen this style before. So very carefully, we'll just pop down in here. Let's see if we can get out the decal sheet. So it all comes out, but the bits we want. <laughs> right. That's why we're slightly stuck in there. So what we're gathered or greeted by is this. So again, what we've actually got down in here is the actual masking, as we've just seen, but it's already been pre-peeled away, which is actually quite a nice touch. So now you just need to come off and grab these and take them away. So it looks like they're on a very good quality tape. It's not quite Tamiya tape, I'll tell you that. It's something else because it's got a little bit of a shine to it, but it does look nice. And I haven't seen that way of doing it in a mainstream kit before. So again, very nice and easy to see. We've also got a little bit of photo etch, very small part. This is down for those, uh, the actual uh, tailplanes where they fit to the fuselage. You've got those plates which go on the side. And then we've got a huge in here, decal sheet. So as you can see, some really nice ones down in here. And obviously, as you know, I'm a real sucker for shark mouths. So that's pretty nice right the way through. So actually looking very good nice good register on those ones 
not a lot of carrier film either which is really nice we've got those walkways and again just down in here we've got those parts for the instrument panel if you did want to go down the decal route but to be honest they're not too bad at all they're very nice crisp and sharp that's very nice indeed right over into the plastic so oh no staples i hate staples <coughs> only because i had an incident with one once it's one of those horrible ones that goes straight under your nail and it went properly under anyway so oh so that's your clam cell in your back end we'll look at that in a moment so actually what we've got down in here is the actual full fuselage so it's not in halves or anything else like that we don't have a plate that has to fit in the middle which to be honest was a little bit of a bugbear with the uh, zakamori kit because it doesn't fit very well and obviously we had a slight alignment between the left and right which made some little gaps just down on the uh, starboard side uh, as well so we don't have any problem with that generally though looking at it it looks very nice detail indeed and as you can see, or hopefully you can see, we've got some very nice all recessed and raised details on the outside. So the handles are molded in as well. So that's quite nice. Down in here, the slime lines or the little night uh, lights, the formation lights, they're very nice, slightly raised as they should be right the way down. And again, maybe just a little bit overdone, if I'm being honest, the panel lining down in here just looks a little bit heavy. But generally very nice indeed we've got the top area on the cockpit with all the details down in there a little bit of plumbing wiring showing through again very nice indeed and again it's just this like this forward one here it just looks a little bit deep the actual panel lining but generally i think that's very nice indeed so no real problems with that one it's a good solid feel to it if you know what i mean and again looking down here on the back catching the light you can see those ports right the way through very nice indeed and then whilst we've got it here we've just got these small little bag with the clamshell back end onto it and again very reminiscent the way academy did it which actually i didn't think was a bad way at all so this is your clamshell and that's beautifully detailed that's got some a lot more detail than the actual uh, zukamori kit so that's actually very nicely done indeed and the great thing about this is you can paint this in metals separately then fit it to your model if you wanted to go around that way which is a little trick we did with the academy one intakes as well looking very nice so we've got the little mark in there as well for the sensor to go down in there and generally that's actually very nicely molded very nicely detailed hopefully it's a nice fit we've got the little light underneath that's very good and last of all down in here we've actually got what would have been the gun and is now if i recommend uh, recall correctly is a sensor now on the front end so uh, that's looking very nice very nicely detailed right the way through so very nice with those okay so another big bit is obviously going to be the wing section so we can just grab in here and have a pile of staples left at the end of this so down in here we've got the under belly and again that's very very nicely done it's a nice little mixture of raised and recessed details as well so you can see it just down in there so again some of these little black strengthening plates on the underside which are actually done very nice the riveting details good clean crisp no problem with any of those at all we've got that no section down in there and in some ways i have to say it's slightly nicer than the way Zukamori did theirs. It, it's more of a positive look to it. So I know some people might find that a little bit overscale, but actually I think that looks really, really nice. You catch it down in the light, it's going to be great. So the Zukamori one's a little bit finer, but generally I have to say I probably prefer the look of this one. So it's a, a nicer type of design underneath there. Okay, so into the normal baggy bits this way because we've got a okay so we have a normal sprue here so this is sprue b looking very nice and again so we've got those intakes and we've got the actual doors very nicely done and again all the other bits as you can see on here so we've got the doors the various things we've got the no section down in here but to be honest we need to flip over and just check for ejector pins and things and again we've got none 
which is very nice. So I tell a lie, I think we've got one down in here, but you're not going to see that because it's going to be behind a bar. So we've got no ejector pins. Down in here as well on these rear doors for the, the main gear. It's actually really nice. You've got raised positive rivets down in there, as on all the other parts. Very nice. Cockpit's pretty much devoid of anything because you're going to be adding to that in a moment, which we'll go and have a look for. But again, inside of that main nose door, beautifully positive rivets and detailing and strengthening plates and then obviously recessed details in with that as well so yes very nice indeed and then down in here we've got sprue j for the actual tail planes and again really very nice indeed so again these which are like a strengthening plate on here it's just the marking for them and again it's a bit weird because i thought it should be slightly raised the problem i have with the zukamori kit i thought they were too raised now they look a little bit uh, too recessed, but hey, not a problem at all. So down in here, we've got the flyer and the chaff extra buckets, which can go on the back of the pylon, which are down in here. We've got the tail hook, the various things. So we've got the rudder, which is nice because we can just deflect that slightly. But again, it's got really nice. The only thing I will say, I can catch it in the light. You see this? This is release agent, which I haven't seen on anything, and now I can feel it. So it's silicon. And it's very rare, and it's very rare, I have to say, but you'd need to wash that because you're not going to be spraying, especially acrylics on top of that. Haven't seen that for a long, long time. Not saying it's anything to take away from the kit, because it's clearly not, but so just haven't seen release agent on a mould, so this must have been a, a first thing in the morning kit. Again, so we've got the, the main wings with the bulged tops and the outer winglets, and again, release agent on this kit. Big blob of it just there. So there we go. But yeah, really very nice indeed. So as you can see, it's a slightly heavier panel lining right the way over this, but it's a nice positive one. So I wouldn't take it as a negative. So very nice indeed. So we've got those forward edge slats and areas, which again, looking very nice indeed. So those wings and down on the inside, again, one piece outer wings. There's no way you can fold up the wings and I'm not even sure if the F or G does fold up its wing tips, but you've got no option to do it on these anyway, because they're going to be bolted and slotted in here. So again, that's very nice indeed. Match pair, we've got down in there two AGM-88s. So we've got some uh, of the older Harm missiles. So that's very nice indeed. Okay, so hopefully down into the cockpit area. We can see, I think these are side arms. I'm not up on my uh, older missiles, shall we say, but I'm pretty sure this was the old side arm down here. So you've got two of those. And then we've also got a very nice sprue with a lot more of the detail parts. So this is quite a nice one because down in here we've got the cockpit. So up here to start, we've got your boarding ladder. You've got the canopy framework, the rear canopy. We've got the vent here as well, which is going to go above the tail, some of the smaller parts for the seats, everything else. This is the internals for those bays, for the auxiliary doors for underneath. We've got the actual uh, main uh, inner wing pylons down in here. So down in here, we've got the instrument panel. Doesn't look too bad at all. That looks very nice. And then down in this part here is part of the ladder, circuit breaker board. And then we've got the actual uh, across the instrument panel cover, the sort of combing for that. All the small parts for the gear. We've got the little bit for the tail with the little sensors, the radar warning receivers down on there. And then over here, we've got various lumps and bumps, but we've got the rudder pedals. Again, nice touch. We've got those doors, which are completely devoid of, I'll tell you what, that's incredible. That's so much detail for something so small, tiny, tiny details right the way over this. This is for those blowing doors underneath. Anyway, cockpit detail is very nicely done. That's incredibly sharp. Catch it in the light there so you can see it really, really sharp, which means it's good and crisp. Very nice indeed for both sides. We've got the rear one as well. And then obviously got the other side, very nice. So yeah, that's actually very nice sprue. Okay, we've got fuel tanks, more clear parts. Just down in here. So we've got three bags of clear parts down in here, which to be honest is just the ones for all the weaponry, which I don't think this one even carries. So down in here, we've got the seeker heads for laser guided bombs and various things. So we can expect that for the E maybe a little bit later on. So we've got some of those, but we have got lights and very other sensors for the front. And then down in here, you've got those intakes and we've got the radar warning receivers. 
So again, those are looking very nice indeed. So those fuel tanks, again, maybe a little bit heavy on the panel lining, but it does not stand out well. It looks really nice. We've got those ALQ pods down in here. That's the short one. So the intakes are not seamless. So we have got some ejector bins down in here. But again, if you're going to see that in there, but you see we've got them at the front or down in there as well. There's actually six, but the mid one on these rear ones is very fine. So, uh, but yeah, I don't know if you're even going to see those or worry about them. Generally though, the pylon detail, very, very nice indeed. So back over into the staples, we've also got We've also got just down in here the tail. So obviously, I assuming the tail is specific this particular screw to doing this one, which it is, because what we've got down in here is the turn around the other way. You can see this is the rear instrument panel for the weapons officer behind the pilot, and then obviously the tail is different because we've got the lump at the top with the warning receivers down in there, and we've got the longer. ALQ jammer pod as well and a couple of little sticks and grips and things like that so that's specific to obviously the G which is on sprue G which is quite uncanny and then down in here we've got some weapons and we've got four match pair all of these and this is your standard sparrow missiles which is quite nice because the tails are all molded in one so you've just got to put the two front ones on them as well and to be honest it's the later sparrow with the little tips on there as well that's quite nice so we've got four sparrows then over here we've got wheels and engines so what we've got is a usual thing match pair for both sprues so if we just have a look at one and as you can see so down in here we've got sprue c looking very very nice indeed so again those are lovely engines and again nice detail no ejector pin on the inside and again the level of detail that's on the inside of the engines is brilliant very nice the flame holder down in here we've got the compressor First stage, we've got the seats, got the cushions, the ejector pull handles, we've got the little engine spike at the front down in there, we've got the seats, which actually on paperwork looked really, really boring, but actually some really nice details molded into that seat right the way through. So that's very nice. And then the actual engine center itself, again, just behind the actual flame holder where that's going to go and all the rest of it, there's an ejector bin. So you're not going to see that, so that's very nicely done. And again, we've got various things. We've got Maverick rails down in here. We've got the wheels, so we don't have any weight on wheels, but we've got nice details in the hubs. Very nice indeed. Okay, so in here, which I don't think we really need to get out, we've just got a plethora of Mavericks. So we've got some Maverick missiles down in there as well. So we've got six of those. Okay, last up, we've got the clear parts. So Zukamori's kit gave you the option of closed canopy or open, which was great because you could use then the closed one as a mask for spraying it and then add the others afterwards. Only the one option down in here. There is a very faint center seam running through these. And it is a very faint one, but there is a center seam going through the middle, but it's going to be a piece of cake to get rid of. Beautifully done. That's a lovely frame. The way that they've done that and got that all to fit in there so again very very clever crystal clear the front one I'll give it the wobble test nothing there side test as well not too bad at all main ones again not too bad there's a little bit of distortion but again it's a very much a complex shape the way that they work but generally though clear parts very very nice indeed and there you have it. That's actually very, very nice. So I am torn now because having sweated blood and tears to put this thing together, I'm automatically going to put it on a part. They're very similar prices. There's only a couple of pounds in it uh, between the different manufacturers. And obviously they both came out around about the same time. Obviously we've now got the F4E, which is basically the same as the F4EJ that we got down in here. And obviously they've also done the F4E, the early version as well, which we've got there. So a lot of people have done a direct comparison because they brought out both the same. To say, I haven't got the G kit because obviously I've just finished building this one. I have to say, I think that fuselage half is an easier one to go together than that one was. 
uh, definitely. It's just, it's one of those ones. It's quite complex and there's a few little fit issues with that particular kit. Overall, I have to say, I think I prefer the design of the Meng one. I think it's going to be an easier go together and it sort of follows along with another kit that I built many times now is the Academy F4. Uh, and again, that particular family of them, they go together this sort of similar way, having underneath and the clam at the back and all the rest of it. It just makes it for an ease of build and straightforward. The details on this particular kit, I think are a little bit more heavy than you'd find on the Zucamori. The Zucamori is a little bit finer done, but if you're going on with a few, you know, different coats of paint, things like that, especially if you're going on with a complex scheme like we did with this particular one, then obviously you're going to lose a lot of detail whilst doing it, where this one I think would stand up a little bit more. So whilst I might say it's a little bit overdone, I think actually working with it and for weathering and things like that, again, I think the main one's probably going to have the edge onto it. So, you know, having not built the main one yet and looking at it, but having looked at it and built obviously the Zucamori one, I can actually say I'd really like to have a go at this particular kit and see exactly how well it goes together because this one down in here, whilst it was a really nice fun build, we had a few little fit issues we need to deal with first. Once we got past that, it's a fantastic build. As of details all the way over it, again, I think the Zucamori one's probably got it. It's just a little bit more detailed than this particular one, but this is the one, honestly, I'd go out and build. So there we go, that's the one, the Meng 148 scale F4G, also right on its heels within the next couple of weeks, we're gonna get the F4E with that particular kit as well. So you can have both options to go out, but I still think it's an absolutely beautiful kit.